Hi, welcome to Stub Stories. I'm Sylvia. I'm that friend that gets you into shows, but yet you don't know what I do for a living. And I'm Ricky. I'm that friend that's bugging you to come with me to shows, probably for a band you've never heard of before. There's a story behind every stub. What's yours? How did this get started? On my end, I've been collecting ticket stubs literally my entire life to the point that I decided I should probably do something with them. I didn't know it was you when I was <laughs> doing that account. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the account. So while my wife was working from home and I was laid off at the moment, I was in the other room recording myself talking about concerts that I went to 15 years prior. I was so excited when, when we like reconnected over it. Now we're here. And then what do we have? We don't even know what we have with this. I just think it's cool trying to build something that's fun. What I learned during the pandemic is didn't think I was an outdoor person. And I ended up doing a lot of walks, listening to music and like, man, and just remembering why I got into shows and being excited about it. And then it's the lesson learned. Take the thing that you take for granted the most away and you're, you miss it. Right. So that started happening. And I'm like, wow, I want to get back to that. Why did I want to get into this business? This is something that we're doing for us. If it sucks, cool. That's fine. We tried it. I think everybody can relate to going to a show and holding on to that stub forever. To me, it's like you see the passes behind me that I'm usually working a show. I look at those passes and it's their memories for me. We're hoping that people can connect with that. Thanks for joining us on Stub Stories. And now we'd like to introduce you to our team. First up, Fabio. Hi, I'm Fabio. I'm the friend who somehow never pays for a show and always gets free parking. And of course, we can't forget about Clay. Hi, I'm Clay, and I'm the guy that's keeping Ricky away from all the backstage catering, stacking towels, and showing you all what's going on backstage. Maybe we'll give away some tickets. I think yeah. since I claim to be the person putting you on lists, I guess I'll have to <laughs> prove that to the general public. We'll, we'll be announcing something in our second episode. If you thought this one sucked, try the, try the second one. Maybe we'll have gotten better by then. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, future episodes will be a little more dialed in. We'll focus on what? one show and not like this however is... many different we've talked about so far. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's very chaotic and we're doing this. That's just how my brain works. So I, I mean, you never know what you're going to hear on this show. We've talked yeah. about everything from Adele to Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> yeah. Or who who could be on the show with the people that we know and we work with? I mean, True. I think we could probably wrangle some some people in here and ask them to talk about their stories, like just some of these bands that we've talked about. What shows have you gone to? But it'd be kind of great to have some of these artists then talk about their favorite stories too. I mean, I'm sure you know as they tour, like it's nice to hear, like, oh, I'm I'm supporting on this tour, but I've been a fan of theirs for years, so it's always like a good story. So. I think we're going to have a good 2024. I'm excited. With plenty of stubs to talk about, for sure. Yeah. We'll do some giveaways. That, that gets people in because yeah. my marketing brain's still working. <laughs> <laughs> but there was always a joke when I used to work with Clay uh, and another one of our many projects that we work on together is like we always say that people in Boston especially are suspicious of free. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we hope to do uh, not just giveaways here in Boston, but, you know, across the country in different shows, because we know that. Yeah, we should do a thing where it's free, but you have to tell you have to come on the show and talk about your, your experience. Yeah. I think that's, that's great. Look at it. We're working out what what it's going to be like, because we don't. Have, that's the way you do it. You just record it and tell people what you're going to be doing. Yeah, because then we have to do it. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah. they'll just be like, hey, you said, like, you you said I can come on the show. There's that first tub, the first ticket stub, the maybe not even the most important to me, but at that first time I saw Bruce. Then there's the fourth time, which was the time I, top, I brought my dad. It was the first time he saw Bruce Springsteen, and that's the one that means the most to me. What was the artist, or who's the artist you've seen the most amount of times? Uh, Madonna. Nice. Oh, actually, I'm, nope, nope. Blink 182. Okay, see, now I'm jealous. <laughs> they could probably put me on stage and I could, I can't play their the instruments, but I could do all the between song banter when their live <laughs> album came out. I was oh. like, I know everything they're going to say. <laughs> Even the fun songs that they made up, there was just so many shows through, uh, whether it be Warped or just, you know, them playing stuff with Downs. It was, there was just a lot of shows. And again, that's one of those artists that you, you don't appreciate it. And then, they come back again and you're like, oh my God, like we were there 
when even Travis was not even in Blink-182. It was, he was in Aquabats, you know, it, and it's, it's amazing to, to watch them evolve. And as they get older, you're getting older and you're like, man, I, I love that I saw all the great bands, you know. I would say um, Adele in Vegas, that was recently. Going in, I just thought I was gonna cry and, and be sad. I mean, I did cry and I was sad for a second, but she's so funny and so engaging and the yeah. whole venue is just set up for her. So I had never experienced that where it's a whole experience, right? Pink at Fenway Park recently, for sure, because I don't know how she did the things she did on that stage and around the stage and flying through Fenway Park and still sing amazing. And obviously the songwriting, Madonna, uh, June, it was in June of 2004 at the Centrum. I, I will always refer to her as the Centrum because <laughs> I had obviously had seen her. It was second to last row the first time I ever went to go see her. And that particular show, I was I was in the second row. At that point, my career was taking off, and I literally looked back and I go, man, look at how far you've come, literally, where you went from second to last, second to first, and I just thought it was a big shot at the time. <laughs> you have ebbs and flows in the business. Head to our website, stepstories.net. Can you imagine not knowing who Green Day is? <laughs> They're coming out with a new record in January. Green Day is. But this tour is celebrating 20 years of American Idiot and 30 years of Dookie. But you're going to get it all in one night. This is what it's all about. My life is never going to get better than these two days. I think this is the bigger plan for Sub Stories is we're going to bring back MySpace. That's it. They can hint, hint, sponsor. Sub Stories presented by MySpace. <laughs> you know I had to get that in there. That would be amazing. We should have Tom from MySpace on. I'm sure he's been to some shows. The Skate Fest is cool because it also kind of ties back into like our history together with like the street mm -hmm. team and stuff yeah. because it's currently taped into my book with all my tickets, but I took a photo of it so I can see the lineup. This week, this week, <laughs> this week we're both going to intro at the same time and you're going to like it, listeners. <laughs> uh, if they bring back, if we can find yeah. a way to bring back Skate Fest, we should do a live episode of that. Yeah. Yeah, we do it. We'll do it for free. We won't. We don't have to pay us. Yeah, you don't have to pay us. <laughs> I see exactly. our one of our producers looking at us like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Hey, we do it for the love of the music." Well, some things. <laughs> <laughs> to find out the full lineup, I had to ride my bike to the library in the town I where I grew up in and go to their computer. And everybody else, I'm sure, was using those computers to like probably do homework or learn about something useful. And I was like, I gotta know what tour I got announced today. Like I would go, you'd sign in, you'd get like an hour or whatever. And I would spend the entire hour looking at tours. That's what I was saying to uh, my friend the other day. I was just like, I think in doing this podcast is I'm kind of taking a minute and looking back at all the cool things I've been a part of or shows I've attended because of what I did uh, or still do. Um, so yeah, so this is, it's not just for, you know, anybody sending us their, their stories, but it's also for, for me, for you. It's like, it's, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. So we're like, we're going to do it. We're going to get up in these booths and we did, but then being obsessed with, you know, I wasn't there to get a VIP spot. I was there to see these bands that I love. And in my mind, I was like, I might never get to see H2O again. Spoiler, I've so seen dramatic. H2O a hundred so times. Dramatic. Right. We did watch one band from the VIP thing, but there was already a bunch of people up there. So we were kind of towards the back. So you don't really get to see that well if you're up there. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget H2O came out. I'm going down into the crowd. My friend was like, don't do that. What if you can't get back up here? And I was like, I don't care. I have to be downstairs for H2O. I went down into the pit. And when I came out, my pass was gone. <laughs> yeah. So this week, we're going to talk about a band that I've seen the most out of any other artist, Newfound Glory. And when Ricky wanted to do Newfound Glory show this week, I thought, oh, he for sure has seen them more times than I have until preparing for this. And I realized I've worked on their show and seen them 31 times. Oh, we what need to bring think it of back. this for an episode? I, in the mail, I got the box of flyers from you. And I was like, yeah. yes, this is sick. And three of them still exist <laughs> so much fun and will you, will you be a street team again like we'll just go back oh absolutely like... absolutely <laughs> i'll still you know 
I'll tape a pass to my leg and, you know, probably lose it. Did you try to sneak in? Did I yell at you? Did you try to get on the guest list? Please let us know. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, give us a follow mm-hmm. on any of the social channels. We're at Stub Stories, and then on TikTok, we're at Stub Stories Pod. Yeah, please join us and thanks. And yeah, if it sucks, cool. We tried. <laughs> See ya. See you next time. Hell yeah. <laughs> we tried. I'm writing it down so I don't forget that. <laughs> Head to our website, stubstories.net.